I call the Honourable Trevor Mellor. Uh, Mr Chairman, I'm, I'm sort of getting slightly anxious about the uh, habit of this Minister. It appears to be a growing habit. I've, um, and, and, and one which it's sort of unusual for him to, uh, to have of, of, um, uh, of not... Yeah, growing habit. The, the Minister used to be quite forthcoming in the House. I think it's fair to say that the Minister used to be forthcoming in places other than the House uh, as well. And, and, sir, it seems to be to me that the, that the Minister has lost his tongue. Um, now, I, I'm... Well, he's, got, he's crawled back into his shell. Um, well, and, and, and I'll get on to the Attorney General uh, relatively soon, but, sir, I think the, the fact that... I, I wasn't planning to take a call now, but the fact that the Minister neither answered the questions that my learned colleague Charles Chavelle asked on the uh, first part, uh, nor, nor yet has placed on the record uh, the response to the questions I asked him in the first reading um, in relation to the Electoral Act, um, I, I'm somewhat surprised that the member is uh, not giving those responses and thereby extending the debate in a way which, frankly, uh, doesn't seem absolutely necessary, uh, Mr Speaker. But it is the responsibility of the opposition to hold the Minister to account. Uh, Mr Chairman, I do... Um, request or suggest that it would be appropriate for the uh, Attorney General uh, to make a contribution uh, in this debate. Uh, the Parliamentary Council works to him. Uh, I understand he has been somewhat unusually uh, involved uh, in the terms and conditions of employment um, for the current uh, Chief Parliamentary Council in a way which uh, in many of us <coughs> would think would be unwise. Um, um, Mr. Mr Chairman, if, 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 if it is correct uh, that an offer was made to, to have this sort of arrangement developed for an individual for a period up to two years, uh, that would be something which would be remarkable. Uh, and I think it would be good uh, if we did have the uh, Attorney General into the House uh, in order to explain the petition and, and I hope, uh, put paid to what is quite an unfortunate uh, positioning uh, for the... Uh, for the Chief Legal Officer um, of, the, uh, of the, Parliament, the, the, the Parliamentary Council. Uh, Mr Speaker, the other person who I'm uh, somewhat concerned about uh, is the State Service Commissioner. Now, it's, um, uh, it was, a, I think, during my time as State Service Commissioner, uh, there was a, uh, an appointment uh, to Chief uh, Parliamentary Council. But frankly, um, because there were probably 50 or 60 such appointments during the time, um, this one has not stuck uh, in my head. I know with the government statistician uh, there is an unusual arrangement. It, it, it's one where uh, the State Service Commissioner has right to appoint uh, and, and the normal veto right uh, of the Cabinet does not apply. What I'm not sure of... Sorry? It's the opposite. It's the opposite here. So, uh, so it's a normal, it's a normal no, chief executive? No, no cabinet can invite the, the State Service Commissioner to help, but, but there's no obligation for him to be involved. Oh, so in this, so in this case it's apparently... Um, it, it's a bit like, is it a bit like the Commissioner of Police and, a, and, and uh, the Defence Forces where there's been a developing uh, tradition, uh, and, and, and I think an important one, uh, of involvement of the State Service Commissioner around running a process... Uh, I think it, I think the well by the well by the invitation of the minister or in, or in some cases uh, actually by the invitation of the prime minister uh, certainly the uh, uh, certainly the senior police position is one that is done by the uh, invitation of the prime minister and it may uh, I think I well I think the recommendations go to the governor general but they go from the prime minister uh, as opposed to uh, as with most chief executives, and certainly uh, those, most of those that I was involved with, uh, I was the Minister of State Services, and I made, uh, I, I effectively signed off those recommendations after consultation uh, with colleagues at Cabinet Committee. They, they, they weren't, um, uh, well, we, we, we certainly never had the position where we reversed out um, a recommendation uh, that had uh, come through. That is a matter, uh, a matter for notification. Uh, under the Act, uh, and, uh, and, and that certainly didn't happen. But as my colleague uh, has informed me, in the case of the Chief uh, Parliamentary Council, uh, it, it, is, it is something uh, which appears to be 
in the gift of the minister. It's not statutory. And, and, that's, uh, and, and, and there's a question, therefore, and I... I... Mr Chairman? I call the Honourable Trevor Mallard. And, 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 and I think that, that, that sort of raises um, a, a, another issue, uh, and, and that is uh, whether that, that is an appropriate position. Uh, whether, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, in this day and age it is appropriate to have someone who is uh, effectively uh, chief executive of a, uh, of, a, of a small but important uh, Department of State, uh, someone whose uh, process uh, is, uh, the, the process in fact involves the gifting uh, of a position uh, from a minister uh, and to, uh, and in, to that uh, particular individual, because that, uh, that I, I think, is um, the way that things used to be done. I think um, back before 1912, I think it was... Uh, I can't, again, I'm, I'm looking to Simon Power. He doesn't remember either. Um, uh, but, the, uh, but the process, I think... Uh, I mean, there have been some clear processes uh, since the state sector uh, reforms in, in, in 1987. Um, but... Or 86, one of those, one of those years. One was the SOEs, and the other was the uh, State Sector Act. Somewhere, uh, w one of those. I mean, clearer processes uh, since that time. Uh, but we have had a tradition for a a, a long period uh, of effectively the decisions being made uh, by the State Services Commissioner uh, as to um, uh, as to these positions. But uh, that appears not to be the case. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm searching, um, and possibly my colleague. Uh, uh, could be drafting as I search uh, whether uh, whether there is any possibility uh, of, of uh, importing uh, into this legislation even at this late stage um, uh, such an arrangement where, whereby uh, the chief parliamentary council has proper process uh, around uh, his or her appointment. Uh, Ms. Chim, can I get some indication from the minister uh, as to whether uh, he is prepared to reply to the comments that my uh, comment Charles Chevelle has made? No, no, in fact there's no indication the Minister's alive, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, I, you know, I know that this has not, not, been, it's not, been, the, it's not been the most exciting, not, not, it's not, Chief Parliamentary Council is not quite as exciting as the Government Statistician. I can, well, well, well I, in, in fact, there's a bit of debate here, sort of two members who I, yeah, who I, who I, who I respect. Well if, well, if it is just as exciting, why is the member going to sleep? I mean, why is the minister going to sleep in the chair uh, when he's been asked to respond on behalf, you know, on his own behalf, or, or to, um, uh, or ask uh, his, his colleague, the... Uh, um, I, I never thought I'd be saying this. I never, I never ever thought that I'd be asking for the Attorney General to get off his backside uh, and to make a speech in this House. Uh, the idea that I'd ask Chris Finlayson to get off his backside and to make a speech is something which feels relatively foreign to me, uh, and, I am, and I, am concerned, I am concerned at the very thought that I should be making uh, such a, 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 a suggestion. Um, Mr, Mr, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 next, uh, the next question is: um, if, in fact, if in fact the Chief Parliamentary Council is going away for a couple of years, whether in fact the gifting of, in this case, his, but in other cases, his or her replacement should be in that individual's hand. I mean, you know, while I've, I've viewed with some disdain the arrangements uh, as to the appointment uh, of uh, the Chief Parliamentary Council and the lack of involvement of the State Services Commissioner and the, the lack of a proper process uh, around these arrangements. Having had these arrangements, uh, the question then is uh, whether, whether or not um, uh, it should be appropriate, for, especially for an appointment uh, of two years, and, and, and we of course have had chief executives uh, appointed for two years, or, or sometimes shorter amounts, 18, down, to, down to 18 months uh, on, on, on particular occasions. Um, if, we, if we are having appointments uh, that are um, so short, uh, sorry, so long, two years, uh, whether or not uh, it in fact uh, should be in the hands of the individual uh, to appoint uh, their own replacement. 
Mr. Chairman, you've got someone else ready. <laughs> Mr. 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 Chairman, this, you know, this, this legislate. Well, now I will give him a, at the end of the speech. I will give him a, a chance to answer, or I'll, I'll, or I'll call on my learned colleague Limpelay uh, to make her contribution. The question is that part two stand part. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that clause one stand part. All those in favour, Mr. Chairman. I call the Honourable Trevor.